Hello, I'm Mario Taniguzzi, Managing Editor of Canada's Podcast, taking care of business today with Alicia Planinchish, who is Economist and Manager of Policy with the Business Council of Alberta. Thanks for joining us today, Alicia. Thanks so much for having me. Well, you're going to talk about a report uh, that uh, you folks have put out on newcomers uh, coming to Canada and uh, and the barriers that they face, uh, you know, as they come here and and settle into uh, you know the uh, life here and uh, and work here, etc. Uh, we're going to go. Let's go through the, each of the barriers that you guys have highlighted here. Number one, language, of course. Uh, how big of a barrier is that for the integration of uh, newcomers into our into the world uh, here? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, maybe if I could start with just a, a teeny bit of background, which is that um, always a good reminder, immigrants represent a large and growing share of our workforce. Yeah. Um, as much as 40% and 36% of Alberta and Canada's workforce um, by 2036, which is really incredible. And so I think there's always a good reminder of why we're doing this work is immigrant success. It's not just about them. It's also Canada's success. And so I think that's why we were really passionate about diving into this issue. We know that there are challenges, but we were really keen to better understand, you know, what are those top themes that we're seeing across? Um, and, and so to answer this, we really, we looked at the data, we looked at the research, but we also talked with a lot of settlement organizations, immigrants themselves, um, to really develop this overarching theme of kind of what are the key barriers. And yes, the first one that you mentioned there, that was by and large, the biggest one that we heard is English language proficiency. Wow. Um, you know, even though a, a lot of folks who are coming to Canada, they were selected for economic immigration, they are very proficient in English. But I think the thing that we forget is a lot of those folks have family members who are coming with them. And we've still got a lot of folks who are coming via other streams. And so a lot of those people are not necessarily proficient in English. And a big challenge that we heard over and over among settlement organizations is there's a really long wait to even get into the primary program to teach English language. And it could be even up to a year is what we heard. Wow. All right. Second uh, second barrier that you highlighted is uh, the connection to settlement services. Uh, first of all, yeah. so why is there a, an issue here and how important is that connection? Yeah, th this one was really interesting to me because we have such a, um, you know, such an extensive web of settlement supports for newcomers. I think that's a really fantastic thing about Canada and is somewhat unique to Canada. But the challenge is there's no real process to actually tell immigrants or connect immigrants with these supports. So basically you um, show up at your you know, government office or wherever to get your PR card and you're essentially sent on your way. Um, there's no official process to say, hey, these are these settlement organizations that are available in your area. And these are the ones in particular that would kind of be best suited for you based on your needs. There's unfortunately no process. So we see that um, only about 38% of adult immigrants actually access supports. And I think a big part of it is they just don't know about them. Yeah, well, and here's another uh, part of that kind of uh, ties into that uh, as a barrier is the access to personal and professional support systems. Yeah, for sure. This is one that we heard a lot about the fact that, you know, a lot of newcomers, they might have relatives who are here and who connect them with maybe some jobs, but it's not necessarily in the occupation or industry of their interest. And that's really where the challenge lies. Um, in fact, there was some RBC research that says as many as 85% of jobs kind of beyond entry level are essentially never publicly advertised. It's just word of mouth. It's just who you know. And so yeah. I think that's really the challenge for immig immigrants, right? Um, is how do how do you get your foot in the door of those um, of those jobs, kind of beyond entry level? Yeah, the next barrier that uh, the report highlights kind of uh, baffled me, not baffled me, but uh, surprised me that there's still discrimination in the labor market out there. It is, and it's also I think quite discouraging. Um, you know, one of the statistics that really uh, stood out to me is the fact that. Um, there's some research done on resumes that are otherwise alike, but one has a, quote, foreign sounding name. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, what the researchers found is that those with a foreign sounding name were as much as 20 to 40 percent less likely to get that first call back. Wow. Um, so 
a real challenge is there. A second language accent is obviously also can still be a challenge, um, as well as foreign credentials, right? So even just on your resume, you might have some what you see as very exceptional credentials, but maybe to an employer they're not as familiar with, or there are some, you know, some reason for a bias towards Canadian credentials. Yeah, the name uh, the name gets me because geez, you and I would be in trouble. <laughs> I I know, I know, I know. Yeah. So let me uh, the the final one, which is the one that gosh, we I don't know how many years we've been dealing with this in Canada is the recognition of foreign education and experience and credentials. Why why are we still dealing with this? Yeah, I mean, I think I would say you know, all, all immigrants are at risk of, of facing this bias, but I think it's it's in particular, as we know, it's in, within those regulated professions. And unfortunately, as many as 50% of economic immigrants are actually in regulated professions where, you know, somewhat ironically, they were selected for their skills to immigrate to Canada, but they, you know, come to Canada and find that they can't actually practice in their profession, at least not without, you know, going back to school or jumping through all these hoops. And yeah, I agree. We, this is something we've been talking about forever. Everybody knows it's an issue. And I think one of the biggest challenges is that it is, um, it's a really, um, you know, there's not any one regulated body, right? Regulator yeah. body. There's different provinces. And then even within provinces, we have different occupations. And so I think it, it's a challenge in that you can't just kind of do one fell swoop to correct for it. Um, that said, I think there are some really intriguing pilots that have been done. Um, to try to basically assess competency um, through a test or something like this beyond just kind of looking at where you went to school, um, basically to give a newcomer a, an opportunity to prove their skills and, and where they fit, you know, what sort of occupational category. And so I, I think this is something that we really, really need to expand more broadly across all professions. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Alicia, as you put everything together, there are all those barriers. Okay, uh, where do we go from here? What do what do we need to do to overcome yeah. Those barriers? Yeah, I mean, I think the two obvious are the, the in my mind the lowest hanging fruit. So, one with respect to that um, English proficiency yeah. and the class that helps to support that is, I think we need to make sure that federal funding. Um, it, it meets need, right? So there sh it should be automatically adjusted in line with need. That is not happening right now. And that's why we have these one year long wait lists. Yeah. The next thing, and again, it's a low hanging fruit. It's very simple to do, but we need to connect newcomers with the settlement services that are available right upon landing or even better, maybe even before landing. Um, that's just a simple, low cost, high value solution. But beyond that, I think we have to figure out this regulated professions issue and really take what we've learned from these pilots to encourage other other um, occupations to take on the same sort of initiative. Because if we don't figure that out, um, we're going to have a lot of potential that is just essentially squandered. And you know, when you look at that, you know, obviously uh, immigration and, you know, newcomers have always been an integral part of this country and the growth of this country. Uh, now we're seeing, uh, you know, record numbers uh, in, you mm -hmm. know, uh, coming, coming to Canada. What are the consequences if we don't get a handle on, on this issue, on these barriers? Yeah, I, it's a great question. I think, you know, all of these issues that I just discussed have, have always been there. I think they're already becoming more and more noticeable. And so I think it's just going to get even worse if we don't address them. It's just going to become more and more apparent, um, which is quite unfortunate for the labor market and for the economy, right? When we have employers who are struggling with job vacancies and trying to fill spots on the one hand, and on the other hand, we have immigrants who are um, very well skilled and suited for certain occupations. You know, it, it's it's really a missed opportunity for all of Canada if we if we can't solve for this. And so I think the pressure is really on to get it right as we increase our numbers um, and as immigrants become more and more integral to the labor market. All right. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks so much. All right. That was Alicia Planinchish, who is economist and Manager of Policy with the Business Council of Alberta. I'm Mario Tanaguzzi, Managing Editor of Canada's Podcast, taking care of business today. Thanks for joining us.